It's now time for the Mike Wagner Show, powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs. The Mike Wagner Show can be heard on Spreaker, Spotify, iHeartRadio, YouTube, iTunes, Anchor FM, Radio Public, and the MikeWagnerShow.com. Mike brings you great guests and interesting people from all across the globe. So sit back, relax, and enjoy another great episode of the Mike Wagner Show. Hey everybody, it's Mike from the Mike Wagner Show. Powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all he needs. Look at a professional website without breaking your budget. Sonic Web Studios is the answer. Sonic Web Studios offers fast, affordable custom web designs at below the competition way. Call today at 1-800-303-3960. That's 1-800-303-3960. Or email to support at sonicwebstudios.com. Mention the Mike Wagner Show. Get 10% off your first order. Sonic Web Studios. Take your image to the next level. Also, the Mike Wagner Show can be heard on the MikeWagnerShow.com. You can check our Facebook page at Facebook.com slash the Mike Wagner Show. You can download and listen on Facebook, SoundCloud, Freaker, Spotify, and iHeartRadio. Also on Anchor FM, Radio Public, iTunes, Google Play, Apple, Deezer, Stitcher, and more. Take the Mike Wagner Show with you on any mobile device. Subscribe to the Mike Wagner Show on the YouTube channel. Also follow the Mike Wagner Show on Instagram and Twitter today. We're here with a wonderful gentleman who has been author since 1994, holds various degrees and teaching credentials. He's a retired government professional. He's been on the um, L.A. police force for a very long time, former National Guard and pilot. And he also has been on TV with a few of his specials. And this guy has about 17 books right now. And he's got a series that is just going to blow you away. And it's about um, what, what's happening right now. What's going to happen? And of course, the state of right and live, ladies and gentlemen, from the beautiful way. This guy is not the Duke of Hell, but he's going to talk about it. So, ladies and gentlemen, live from the West Coast, author Terry Cook. Terry, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Thanks for joining us today. Thanks, Michael. I'm glad you qualified me that I'm not, in fact, the Duke of Hell. But that's the title of my book, and my website is also www.dukahell.com, where you can watch a video trailer and also order the book directly from there, www.dukahell.com. So thank you very much for the kind introduction, and I'm uh, very excited about doing this show with you, Michael. And it and, and sounds really good, too. Before we talk about the Duke of Hell series, uh, you've been an author since 94. You hold various degrees and teaching credentials. You're a retired government professional. You've... um. Been working with the uh, L.A. Police Department, former National Guard and pilot, and um, you've also been on uh, quite a number of shows, and you also have been on the History Channel as well, too. And before we get to all that, um, tell us how you got started as being an author and about the Duke of Hell. That, that's a very good question, uh, and I'm often asked that uh, because people are interested with my background. Gee, how did you get into so-called religion and uh, the end of the world stuff? Well, it's a long story starting in 1987, and I read a Christian book back then uh, informing you know, its readers, uh, me in fact, uh, what was happening in the world to transition everybody on the planet into a new age, a new world order. Now, this was back in 1987, and I found it very interesting because as a juvenile in junior high school, uh, under the tutelage, under the instruction of World War II survivors, you know, uh, uh, I had to read and, and do book reports as a junior high school student on Hitler's, um, you know, dictatorship, uh, many of which were about the new world order that Hitler wanted. Now, he used the same term, new world order. Then he wrote a book in 1942 in the middle of the war. In 1942, he published it in Australia, and it was called My New World Order, Adolf Hitler. Uh, then uh, in 1991 comes along. That was 87, and I read that book. And then 91 comes along, and George H.W. Bush went public with it. And he said New World Order about 200 times over a period of three months. And I thought, whoa, what in the hell is going on? Literally, what in the hell is going on? Because H.W. Bush claimed he was a Christian, a conservative, and a Republican. All that. He's using the same term, Adolf Hitler used and it was no mistake he said it over three a three-month period of time 200 times new world order new age thousand points of light uh etc cetera, etc cetera. all the satanic uh, new age terms that i had learned in that 1987 book i had read by a famous christian uh dr tommy ice so um that really piqued my interest and i thought wait what is this guy who is this guy 
And why is he selling us a new world order, declaring martial law, taking us over to the Middle East for a, a quick war, he said, which wasn't so quick after all. <laughs> the initial, <laughs> Ain't that it, the it, truth? The initial phase was quick, but it never ended. So um, one thing led to another, and I investigated George Bush as, as, a, as a cop would investigate a crime, as it were, because it really was after I discovered what he was all about. Uh, and he belonged to the Skull and Bones Brotherhood of Death Cult in New Haven, Connecticut. But his son, W. Bush, joined it as well in 1967. H.W. joined it in 1947 when I was born. That was the year I was born. I'm 72. Uh, his son joined it at Yale in 1967. Uh, Jeb Bush never joined the Skull and Bones Brotherhood of Death cult at Yale. It's not a fraternity. It's a satanic cult uh, located at Yale, but on a separate piece of real estate, a small little patch of real estate not owned by Yale, okay, owned by the Russell Satanic Russell Trust. Okay, so this is a recruiting organization for rich boys whose dads have been Skull and Bones satanic cult members for years and years. For example, H.W. Bush's dad, Prescott Bush, joined the Skull and Bones at, at the Yale campus, but not officially a part of the Yale campus, in 1917. Uh, Prescott Bush ran a bank for Rockefeller, which funded the Nazis. And so Prescott Bush was really a Nazi sympathizer, a Nazi funder, and you might even call him just a Nazi. OK, so it goes way back uh, all the way to Europe. Their bloodline goes all the way back to Europe in uh, in the satanic occultism of this planned uh, transgenerational new world order, Mike, that transcends generation after generation after generation going back about 500 years, uh, actually about 6000 years back to the Garden of Eden when that original snake gave uh, <laughs> gave the delusion uh, to Adam and Eve, and uh, sin was committed. See, original sin is called in, in Christendom. But uh, so the snake, uh, Lucifer, Satan, has wanted a new world order where the world would worship him, mm -hmm. literally worship him, uh, instead of worshiping God and Christ. So this final thing that's coming called the new world order, and if you, if you just Google that term, Mike, you'll see there are about 10 gazillion articles, uh, YouTube references, no, you know, all over the, for the last 30, 40 years, you'll see the New World Order is just not some spontaneous little cute phrase that people are using. This term literally means the taking over of the entire planet by the son of the devil himself, Satan's son, whom they call the Great Duke of Hell. Therefore, I've named my so-called sci-fi book, which really ain't sci-fi at all. I just call it a sci-fi, but it's really real in sci-fi fictional writing format. And, and the son of the Antichrist, I'm sorry, the son of the devil, the Antichrist, is literally called by their own hierarchy, their own people in their own hierarchy, they call him the Great Duke of Hell. Mm -hmm. And he's, he's, a, he's a third member of the uh, unholy trinity, in other words, the Antichrist. Now, they say he's going to come in a UFO. So if you go to their websites on YouTube, they tell you exactly how he's going to come and approximately when, but they say they don't know the exact day and hour, but then they tell you exactly what he's going to do when he gets here. Uh -huh. So I thought, as a, as a uh, retired police investigator with a degree in law, I, I found that very interesting. So I thought, well, gee, I can learn a lot as an intelligence officer, uh, conservative intelligence officer for God and country. I can learn a lot from these enemies of God and country. And uh, they tell me exactly what they're going to do when they get here, how the Antichrist is going to come down and change the world and so forth. So I just decided to take all that information and condense it into a book. Therefore, I have a new sci-fi book that ain't sci-fi at all. It's called The Duke of Hell. That is amazing. And it makes me want to read that as well, too. You know, you're talking about the New World Order. Some people say it started around the time of um, George Bush. It started time, you know, before that, like in the World Wars or even Revolution. And and if I'm correct, you said the New World Order actually it happened with um, the serpent in the Garden of Eden, basically just tricking Adam and Eve. Is that correct? Yeah. Uh huh. Because what the New World Order really means is that the devil will run the planet under him, 
which is a new order without God. And that's what it says on the back of the dollar bill. Mike, do you have a dollar bill handy? Could you whip out that dollar bill? It's on every dollar bill. It's in everybody's face. And it's been in everybody's face since 1935 when Roosevelt put that pyramid on the back of the dollar bill. Do you have it handy, Michael? Uh, yes, I do. And of course, although it's in uh, on an audio version here, um, I do see it says, um, I knew it, Coseptis. It's C O E P T I S. It's been a while since I've done Latin. And I do read this as well, too. And I'm trying to uh, read right now. I'm trying to. Oh, okay, that, that's fine. Let me let me oh. help you out there. But you were almost right. Let me help you out. A new it coeptus means announcing the conception of. Now you'll talk to people that have a different interpretation given by many people. But essentially, the bottom line is that symbol was placed on the dollar bill by the Roosevelt administration, and he and his president, his his vice president. I'm sorry, Roosevelt and his vice president were both Masons. And so they were directed to actually put that symbol on the dollar bill in 1935, which was actually designed 200 years earlier, not in its final form, like you see on the back of the dollar bill presently today. But it was designed about 200 years plus ago by Adam Weissop, the, uh, the creator of the Illuminati, the top 13 people who ro rule the world. In other words, the top 13 Satanists who rule the world. So mm -hmm. through through them, they orchestrate everything in the world. They own the financial system. They own all the, and they own everything. They own the world, about a 200, uh, $2,000 trillion worth of assets. They basically own all nations on the planet, all businesses on the planet. They own all the banks, all the exchanges, everything. They own everything, all the media. They own most of the politicians. And so what that symbol says is announcing the birth of the new world order. It says, Anuit coeptus novus ordo seclorum, announcing the conception of the new world order under the all-seeing eye of Satan, the Antichrist, the Duke of Hell. I was just going to ask you about that. Now you clarified, and it's funny you have mentioned that, and it says, in God we trust. And it's got it the mean, George it doesn't Washington. Mean, it doesn't mean our God. It means... The people who put that symbol on, their god is Lucifer. The Illuminati god is Lucifer, Satan, the great duke of hell. Wow, that is amazing. I'm learning a lot from you as well, too. We'll talk more about the duke of hell, getting into some books as well, too. But first, listen to the Mike Wagner Show at themikewagnershow.com, powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs. Look at a professional website without breaking your budget. Sonic Web Studios is the answer. Sonic Web Studios offers fast, affordable custom web designs that blow the competition away. Call today at 1 800 303 3960. That's 1 800 303 3960. Or email to support at sonicwebstudios.com. Mention the Mike Wagner Show, get 10% off your first order. Sonic Web Studios, take your image to the next level. Also, the Mike Wagner Show can be heard on the Mike Show.com. You can check our Facebook page at Facebook.com slash the Mike Wagner Show. You can download and listen on Facebook, SoundCloud, Spreaker, Spotify, and iHeartRadio. Also on Anchor FM, Radio Public, iTunes, Google Play, Apple, and more. Take the Mike Wagner Show with you on any mobile device. Subscribe to the Mike Wagner Show on the YouTube channel. Also follow the Mike Wagner Show on Instagram and Twitter today. We're here with author Terry Cook of the Duke of Hell series. He also has books called The Mark of the New World Order, Comrade Antichrist. Also Revolution 1984, America's Enemy Within, the Communist Fifth Column as well. He's done 17 books as well, too, but we'll talk about those later as well and another time. But we're going to be talking about the Duke of Hell. And, of course, he gave us um, an introduction to it. And, yeah, it's 2020 right now, and the world's on a brink of complete destruction. And, you know, bring on um, Astaroth, the Antichrist, and, um, you know, tell us more about this character and um, how it begins with, um, with, with the book and just getting started and everything. Well, Mike, um, uh, listen, the Antichrist, this is the biggest event in all of world history. And, of course, the evolutions, the evolutionists have told you that the world's been around for billions of years and that we, uh, uh, we, we were blown into the universe by the Big Bang Theory, you know, and, uh, and then all of a sudden we spewed out this little speck called Earth, uh, spewed out of the Big Bang Theory someplace, and then it perfectly rounded itself and created an ocean. And uh, through a few zillion years, it turned out that humans crawled out of the sea from the amoeba, you know, transitioned from monkey and all that crap from hell. Oh, evolution. You know, I mean, who could believe that? It takes more faith to believe in evolution than it does in God. 
So mm -hmm. I like to go to, I like to go the easy way. Jesus told me what to believe and I just accept it and I love him and accept him and that's the easy way and he says if I love and believe in him then he'll forgive me for everything I did and and didn't do and uh, I'll go to heaven forever after this life you see now I choose to believe that because that's a solid promise from the book that I can't prove wrong and anybody who's tried to prove the Bible wrong cannot unless they lie to you and say otherwise you see so mm -hmm. i tried to prove it wrong because i was an agnostic in 1983 and didn't come to the lord my mother was a baptist and all that stuff but i i myself am I'm a vietnam vet i'll be 73 shortly so i'm an older guy you're just a kid you know you're what 31 right mike <laughs> well you is know that... something um although it is audio i have to say this if you saw my picture I don't look 31 at all. <laughs> Not to give you a heads up that you say that you went to junior high around 1987 and probably reverse those numbers. That's when I went to junior high. It's not 87 for you. It would be 78. No, no, I went. No, I went to junior high school in 62. Oh wow. Okay. All right. Okay. 34. So. That Okay, so so that makes a lot more sense, and you would probably have to say that um, I was being developed during the time that Kennedy got shot. You know, yeah, I remember that. I remember that. I was in I was in twelfth grade, and I was walking across the high school lawn from the parking lot where I had my my Chevy parked, and uh, I was going back to classroom when that happened, and it went over the PA system. So I remember that exact day, and then I was shortly sent to Vietnam thereafter. But you said eighty seven. That's when I read my first book, uh, informing me as to what was going on with the new age and the new world order, Mike. So I could I confused you, and I apologize. I actually went to junior high school in 62 and 63 and I graduated in 65 and went to Vietnam in 66. Got it. Okay. So yeah, I, I remember that time that, um, you know, JFK got shot. I yep. was being de developed at the time, you know, being born in 64 and everything. So I guess I kind of gave away my age to everyone. And there was also a conspiracy out there with, uh, John F. Kennedy that in his, uh, early presidency, I, if I'm right, or correct me if I'm wrong here, that he was asked to join this New World Order, and he refused. And there was a thing about with um, Cuba, the Bay of Pigs, and Russians and everything else. And one of the reasons why he got assassinated is because he refused to go along with the program, if I'm correct. You, you're absolutely correct. But more than that, are you in front of your computer presently, my friend? Uh, yes, I am. Uh, okay, let's tell people exactly why. Uh, regardless of all the people who have made money on uh, bogus stories thereof and thereabout, let's go right to the bottom line. This is the reason why they actually executed him. So, um, Michael, just uh, put into the browser there, Google, just put in JFK, comma, executive order 11110. Executive order. Oh, yeah. You know Executive what? Executive order one 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 zero. I did not. I did not type it up. I just type in JFK, and it did it for me. Ah, thank you, Google. I didn't have to use my uh, my speech here. <laughs> so Big Brother is watching. This is why I've written two books on the NSA and Big Brother. You see, because Google is actually a part of. Uh, did you know Amazon owns and seeded the original development of Google? while well, those two guys were at Stanford University. And so Jeff Bezos seeded the original Google. Google now is a part of the Department of Defense, essentially. And the NSA's new facility in Bluffdale, Utah, uh, does everything real time now. When that facility just a few years ago went online with quantum computers, everything in the world online is now in real time. Wow. This, this show... This show, as soon as it hits the air, will be real time. Um, you know, it hasn't hit the air yet, but uh, uh, when it goes on the air, it'll be real time instantly all over the world. Uh, and every time you actually type something into Google, the quantum computers analyze everything they've known about you in the past, everything you've asked uh, recently, all the radio shows you've done, and, it, and the, the algorithm anticipates what you're going to ask the minute you start typing. Wow, algorithms, and the only algorithm I still say is my Facebook, and that is rather interesting. Well, Facebook's a part of it now, too, you see. Uh, everything is into the fold now. You mm -hmm. see, the, the whole world is going into this Big Brother organization. For example, if you have 
an Alexis device in your home from Mr. Jeff Bezos and Amazon, you are an absolute fool. Why I, would you do that? Why would you I, do that? And furthermore, Mike, why would you have one in the bedroom when Alexis is listening to everything you do? I don't own an Alexa. That's the thing. When I, I when I um had seen those and I play with those and I looked, it's like, you know, why would you tell a computer to do something or play something? We can go get up and do it yourself. And I hear in stores, Alexa, play my morning mix. And I'm like, I can play my own morning mix. I can play it in my head or, ju- or just simply turn on the radio. That was my version of these days. If I want a morning mix, I just turn on a radio or I just put in a cassette, which I just mash up a bunch of songs on cassette in my younger days, which led me to a radio career and just play that. And now you got the CDs. And of course, you have like a mashup of putting on an album when you wake up. So that was my version of just um, my of Alexa. It's like I get up and just do it myself. And I'm surprised that some computers tell them to do it for you. So it's just well, they, they even have a new faucet now, Michael. They even have a new faucet that's hooked. You have a water faucet. You know, in your sink, in your kitchen sink by Delta, okay, they have a new water faucet that's connected to Alexa. You can act, tell your faucet to fill up your water pan so you can cook some dinner. Oh, no. I mean, you can't just get up to your faucet and turn it on yourself? No, but listen. Unbelievable. Well, listen, the mortgages are underwater. The stocks are underwater. Why not just have your kitchen underwater? Alexa can do it for you. All you <laughs> just say is, is say, please, honey, turn on my water. <laughs> yeah, yes. Yeah, so it's like, you know, kind of treating Alexa like your second wife or something. It's like, you know, you can always have your spouse, my lovely wife, would say, hey, can you turn on water? Sure. Hey, I hey the, the way all those advanced AI sex dolls are going, they're selling like hotcakes, <laughs> you know, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, million, really, really, the million, the millionaires, millionaires are buying their sex dolls because I guess their wives don't work anymore. I don't know, but they're cooked. They're hooked to uh, AI intelligence, you see, and uh, they're almost lifelike. So uh, everything's automated today, Michael. <laughs> oh my goodness! AI sex dolls. What's next? AI dogs. AI cats. AI hamsters, AI parrots. Oh my goodness. I, I can imagine, um, you know, having the, um, AI sex dolls goes, Hey baby, um, on. <laughs> no, no, no. Hey, they don't talk like that anymore. They talk like humans. Oh no. Those are old day. Those are I, old day devices. No, the I, new ones, they sound just like your girlfriend. I was, I was, I was joking about that. And I remember a long time ago, you know, we'll get back to Duke of hell in just a minute. This is fantastic. And I like to have you on as a series and, um, you know, okay, extend, let's do that. Extend, extend a great deal. But I remember watching a educational video. It was on super eight, you know, the old film projector and it runs yeah. through back in the day. Well, yeah. it was done by AT&T. I think it was, what was it? Bell labs. And they did a thing about, um, you know, computer voice. Where, where they did a thing where it was computer simulation and it says, I like my coffee black. And they adjust the pitch. Like, I like my coffee black. And then yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I like my coffee black. It almost sounds like Count Dracula or that Dracula on Sesame Street. And every time I hear that, I bust out in the laughing. The kids be like, what is so funny? But, but yeah, that's just coming. It's just almost like the genesis of your right. Almost like AI and, um, you know, connecting the computer voice with humans and yeah, it's gotten to a point where it's like nowadays it's like, can you tell what's human and what's AI? You know, that's going to be another ethical question. Well, when you get a chance, you're exactly correct. When you get a chance, Michael, if you haven't already done so, go to my uh, – and ladies and gentlemen in the listening audience, go to my website because I have a $1,000 um, AI program that allowed me to create the robots in my trailer video that you can watch at my website. Please go to – www duke of hell duke of hell one word duke of hell.com duke of hell.com go to that and watch my 13 minute you don't have to watch all 13 minutes but if you do you'll get a, a hell of an education literally a hell of an education actually a heaven of an ed- education <laughs> about hell 
better <laughs> or a, a heck heaven, of an education <laughs> a heaven of an education about hell <laughs> oh my gosh <laughs> and of course speaking of the duke of hell we'll uh talk more about it in detail but first listen to the mike widener show at the mike widener show.com powered by sonic web studios visit online at sonic web studios.com for all you needs look in professional website without breaking your budget sonic web studios is the answer sonic web studios offers fast affordable custom web designs that blow the competition away Call today at 1-800-303-3960. That's 1-800-303-3960. Or email to support at sonicwebstudios.com. Mention the Mike Widener Show. Get 10% off your first order. Sonic Web Studios. Take your image to the next level. Also, the Mike Widener Show can be heard on the themikewidenershow.com. You can check our Facebook page at facebook.com slash Show. You can download and listen on Facebook, SoundCloud, Spreaker, Spotify, and iHeartRadio. Also on Anchor FM, Radio Public, iTunes, Google Play, Apple, and more. Take the Mike Widener Show with you on any mobile device. Subscribe to the Mike Widener Show on the YouTube channel. Also follow the Mike Widener Show on Instagram and Twitter today without AI. We're here with author Terry Cook um, of the Duke of Hell series, and we talked about um, some of the genesis of it, and he's been author since 1994, put out 17 books. And, of course, you know, you also have the Duke of Hell. We're talking about that. And plus, he has some previous books which led up to Duke of Hell, which is Astaroth Antichrist, Ashtar New World Order, and Ashtar as well, too. And uh, tell us about those uh, books as well, too. And um, how did the name uh, Ashtar, where was it de- derived from? I'm glad you asked. Very important question. And this is the reason I actually gave this book, created this book, uh, created the website, created the uh, book trailer, created uh, everything, uh, because uh, I have been retired, as I told you, for about five years, but still, some of my old radio friends, like the Omega Man, do you know uh, Shannon at the Omega Man.com? Uh, he's yeah, good. Look, look him up. Com, yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. Omega, Omega Man.com. And so he kept calling me at least once a year after I did uh, the H2 history program called Countdown to Apocalypse. They called me in 2012. And, you know, back then there was uh, all that end of the world stuff with. Uh, uh, the, uh, the the Indians, you know, the ancient uh, Indians on uh, the 2012 calendar, the end of the world calendar, oh, you know, by the, the Mayan remember, calendar. All, yeah, the Mayan calendar, all that stuff, and several other Indian cal- calendars, but they all focused on uh, roughly 2012. Well, so um, H2 History decided to do a special called Countdown to Apocalypse that more focused on the Bible than all that stuff, you see. So uh-huh. uh, they uh, searched the Internet. I wasn't even looking for the job, frankly. They searched the Internet and they found me and they said they wanted a new face and they wanted somebody knowledgeable. So they invited me down to Holly Weird and I, they flew me down to Holly Weird and I f- recorded for three and a half hours in their studio. And I actually ended up getting about an hour off and on. But I was the lead face on that very special one-hour show called Countdown to Apocalypse. It was a beautiful show. I was the lead face, and I was the ending face, so they thought pretty highly of me, and I really appreciated that. And that's that was, show was subsequently re-aired every quarter for seven years after 2012. They just pulled wow. it last year. Just pulled it. So I was very blessed. I've probably been seen by a billion people or so. And I feel sorry for them because uh, my head is shiny and bald, and it was quite a reflection. They had to put a lot of powder on my head to get my <laughs> reflection down. <laughs> I was a real glare. <laughs> I'll, tell you, I'll tell you, you and me both as well, too, and I have to put it on. And um, I don't know how much hair we're going to have left, but um, I was, I was, I was going to ask you about 2012. Of course, you know, everybody thought the world was going to come to an end. And I said, if, if the world was going to come to an end, it's like, did the minds eat too many Twinkies or something? And I think <laughs> there was something in there, too. It's like they must have stopped it. And if you have so many Twinkies, you're just on a high or something. I think they developed the Twinkies at that time. So, <laughs> Well, I tell you, they were they were uh, probably smoking too many Twinkies. You know what I mean? <laughs> and weed at the same time. Well, yeah. Uh, uh, listen, they pulled out the uh, cream filling in the Twinkies and put grass in there. I probably... <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's so, t- t- better for most people and of course you know marijuana these days actually does cure a lot of things like you you talk about the cbd oil without the the thc which is the ingredient to getting high and um and of course it's getting to be a uh, more health benefit so maybe they got some health benefits but maybe some got a little silly on that so <laughs> well to me to me it was all smoke and mirrors <laughs> <laughs> Because uh, I, 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 you know, as a, as a young policeman in uh, Los Angeles, I hired, I handled 
Charles Manson, the you know that that nasty murderer, Charles uh-huh. Manson. Right out of the police academy, I was 22, almost 23 years old, and I could run 10 miles without breathing back then. So they said, hey, we need a special crew to take Manson to court every day and his girls. So I was one of the chosen to do that job for several months. But uh, anyway, I handled eight murders and, uh, you know, thousands of crimes and made arrests. And I worked a police car on the streets of L.A. in the roughest areas for six years. So. Uh, that's why I'm bald, and um, and that's why I'm I'm fairly tainted. So uh, forgive my attitude because I'm just an old uh, ex LA street cop. You know, I was promoted later on, uh, on up the scale. But uh, still, once a marine, always a marine, as it were. Uh, I was never a marine. I was in the navy during Vietnam. But still, as you know, the same expression applies toward police work. You know, you don't do that. It's a it's a career. It's a lifestyle. You just don't do that as a job. You know, you don't go out in the streets and get shot at and shoot at. Uh, it's, it's a different kind of a lifestyle. So uh, 20 years was enough for me, though, and uh, I got out and changed careers and uh, subsequently became a book author. You see, look, Mike, here's the thing. Uh, when I was a policeman, I booked criminals, did I not? I, I mean, I booked a lot. I made thousands of arrests, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. But I, I like taking Charles Manson to jail. I like booking criminals that hurt people. Uh, I kind of missed it after I retired, so I became a book author, you see, because now I can throw the book at people and charge them 10 bucks. <laughs> throw the book at people. I get it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I was going to ask you the one question as well, too, before getting back in that thought. Um, what did Charles Manson uh, do to you, and how did he react to you when you took him in? Did he say anything? What did he say? Did he spit at you? Try well, to I, 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 didn't, I, I didn't take him in. LAPD did it. I actually worked L.A. Sheriff. And uh, I was in charge of, uh, along with several others, of taking him to court every day, holding him in custody uh, between the main jail facility and the courthouse. So uh, that took a special crew. And uh, so, I no, I did not arrest him. I wasn't LAPD. I was LASO, L.A. Sheriff. So uh, the guys uh, did a great job over there at LAPD, and uh, I just took him to court every day during the trial. But he did threaten to kill me once, and uh, right after he had tattooed the swastika, uh, between his eyes. And I said, uh, you know, Charlie, uh, I was 23 and we were in the elevator alone together. And I said, Charlie, listen now, uh, I know you can have people killed. You're still having people killed and all that stuff. And he threatened to kill me. Oh. And I said, uh, yeah, but I had him all chained. I, I had his legs chained to his, to his backside and, uh, you know, and I was alone with him and armed heavily. And, uh, so when he threatened to kill me, I said, Charlie, I can take a beer can out at 25 yards, but see that swastika between your eyes uh, at 25 inches. I can't miss. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, had, do you, what do you say about my, that? Uh, well, you know, he didn't say anything. Here's the thing I've noticed about mass murders, including Hitler and all of the night stalkers and the Ted Bundy's and all that other stuff. Have you noticed this, Mike? Have you observed that uh, when you watch the trials and all the documentaries on television, that none of them actually, none of them want to die. You know, really? they're, you, they're, they're really eager to kill people in the most vicious ways. Okay, uh-huh. mass murder, beat them over the head, you know, cut their arms off and everything else. But when it comes to they themselves dying, they cop a plea so they don't get the death penalty. Have you noticed that? I have noticed in a way, too, and I've... um have followed the news with a lot of that. And yes, you're right. I mean, it's just disturbing, but yes, true. Also at the same time. Look at how many people Hitler did uh, uh, executed and had executed and executed himself, his officers who betrayed him and so on. But when it came right down to it, Hitler himself did not want to die. Everybody around him took pills, but you know the story, you've heard the story, and I believe it's very true that they burned a body that looked about Hitler's size that was unrecognizable. And Hitler took off to South America where he he eventually died and all the, the, uh, the Jewish people were still looking for him. Uh, So uh, I don't think he uh, died back then after the war. I think he died subsequently 40 years later in South America, someplace in a bunker, maybe too many breeders or something. So (laughs) yeah, probably more than likely. Yeah, a- exactly. And of course, it also ties to um, what's happening as well, too, with the Duke of Hell and, of course, thousands of, da- thousands of daily earthquakes. And of course, you got um, what's happening in China with the uh, coronavirus, Russia. And of course, you know, 
according to your book, announced the possession of the most advanced nuclear weaponry. The Middle East is entangled in never-ending conflict. And um, also, um, you know, says the planet desperately needs a messiah, a savior to fix things. And, of course, you know, as you said, Lord Ashtar of Intergalactic Asteroid UFO has announced his arrival in Arizona. So, you know, just the thing is, it's like, you know, you know, tell us more about uh, Lord Ashtar and, um, and, of course, you know, the meaning of um, Arizona. We, you know, good questions. Um, very good observations. And, of course, all this has taken years of study to fully comprehend, and it sounds crazy. But, mm-hmm. see, that's what, the, that's what the world is going to get. You see, the world first has to be uh, – let me start by saying this about the Bible, okay? Uh, I became a Christian because I was pretty much an agnostic after Vietnam, you know, handled some body bags and uh, saw a lot of death and, and destruction. Even though I was in the Navy, though, I, I handled a lot of – body bags with dead marines who were my age 18 19 years old all wars are fought by kids uh the the old people don't want to fight them so they always send their children um so you know i became kind of tainted and uh i thought to myself gee uh if there really were a god why wouldn't he stop all this evil well you don't really understand it you know i think most people have asked good people most good people have asked themselves that or ask others or ask their pastors if they go to church and so that's that's the question of the day why does god allow all this evil well it takes a long time to explain that and it goes back six thousand years of recorded history to the garden of eden where first sin was committed uh, at the encouragement of lucifer the snake or the dragon uh, and that's what he's called even today the snake the dragon the serpent uh, and and the goat the three major symbols of Satan, Michael, are first the snake in the Garden of Eden, and second the old dragon, which is the unofficial symbol of Red China, by the way, and uh, then thirdly the goat, and this is the goat of Mendes that's seen everywhere in the world as a symbol of Satanism. You see a five-pointed pentagram star with the goat head in the middle of the five-pointed star. That's the goat of Mendes. That's a symbol of Satan himself. And by the way, the goat in full form, if you see not just the head, but if you see the goat in full form, the whole goat of Mendes, you'll see that that goat is transgender. It's both male and female. Mm, I see. You see? You see? <laughs> and so that's what's happening. Uh, the major symbols for Satan, again, are the snake or serpent, the dragon, and the goat. Now, isn't it interesting that Matthew 25, starting, okay, let's get this down, folks. You need to study this. You see, everybody in Washington is either calling themselves the left or the right. Are they not, Michael? I mean, we're on the left, right? Yeah, that's what uh, a lot of people are saying, too. It's just like, you know, conservative, liberal, independent. And right now, that's all fractured at this time in America. Well, yes, but they're all from the left. Now, that doesn't mean liberal, but yes, it is liberal, okay? Mm -hmm. So let me say this. All this stuff comes from Karl Marx. Karl Marx was the founder of so-called Marxism, which later became communism after Lenin had his revolution in 1917, the Bolshevik Revolution in Russia, you see? But Karl Marx got the credit for having invented communism or Marxism, through his ten tenets, you see, uh-huh. and his his ten tenets of Marxism mocked the ten commandments of God. You see, Marx was a Satanist. Marx uh-huh. was a Satanist, ladies and gentlemen. I want you to hear that. I'm going to say it three times. You know, most people when they attend college class, the reason the instructors repeat things, and I'm an ex-flight instructor, the reason you repeat things is because people generally don't get it the first time. Uh And if you're listening to a radio show, your mind starts wandering and so on and so on. Well, I'm a teacher and I have three teaching credentials. I know all that stuff. Plus, I was a student myself and the same thing happened to me as a student. So I'm going to repeat this. Karl Marx was a devil worshiper. Okay, so Marxism, i.e. socialism, i.e. progressivism, i.e. communism i.e. liberalism, i.e. democratism, i.e. and on and on, are 
Satanism in disguise. In fact, one of my books is very brief that if you go to Amazon, as you already have, Michael, I didn't know you had done that. Thank you. But if you go, uh, uh, a book I wrote 10 years ago is very brief, about 35 pages called Revolution. You, are, you, actually, you actually cited that title, but the subtitle is uh, Revolution, Communism is Satanism in Disguise. So that's what it is. Communism was formed by Satan's people, Satan's disciples, to begin converting the world into a new world order of global communism, which is the political face of Satanism. So communism is really the political label or the political face or the, the soldier's uniform, you know, of the Soviet Union and then communist China and communist North Korea and now communist USA because we've been converted. You see? Mm -hmm. um, so Communism, again, or socialism, is really nothing more than Satanism in disguise. Now, the only difference between, Michael, you have to talk to me now. I'm a Vietnam War vet, and I'm an, also an expert anti-communist intelligence officer, and I was in the National Guard. The National Guard, I started infantry tanks after Vietnam. Okay, I was enlisted in the Navy. I got a commission in the National Guard, and I was an anti-communist intelligence officer in the National Guard. So I'm an expert. I have all the communist documents about how they were going to conquer America. They've done it exactly by their book. And the only mm -hmm. thing that remains is an invasion and a conquering of America with a blitzkrieg. Now, now Hitler called it a blitzkrieg. I but, remember. Uh, yes. You remember that? Okay. That means, uh, that means what American Pentagon people call full-spectrum dominance. Full-spectrum dominance is what we did when George H.W. Bush said New World Order 200 times and took us to Iraq the first time. And remember how we hammered them for a couple of weeks. You were pretty young then. But remember, we hammered them relentlessly, unceasingly for weeks and virtually destroyed everything over there. And they were defeated. Mm -hmm. That's called that's called full spectrum dominance. That's an all uh, all out attack from every possible angle using all forces available everywhere on top of it relentlessly for a given period of time so that the enemy can't even breathe in between attacks you see it, that so was like call, that was like called the gulf war back in 91 and i remember some people were going there and they said it's going to be like the shortest war and of course you had the war in afghanistan that Oh, dragged down for like what twenty years, and then of course you had the um nine eleven, and everybody's talking about it as well too. And um, maybe your take on nine eleven as well too. Yes, now nine eleven is a whole different story, and we could consume uh, as you uh, invited me earlier into several more programs. We could right. consume several hours on that alone, but many fine investigators have already done that. So I kind of, and it's old, and and people don't really want to hear it anymore. And I think there's so much about to happen, Michael, that we need to devote more time to what is about to happen, what is currently happening right now with the observation of unprecedented UFO appearances all over the world. I'm pre last year, 19, over 1,900 observations, uh, encounters uh, were observed by various people all over the world. And then uh, a big encounter in, uh, in the Alaskan Triangle. Uh, was so more UFO sightings were uh, reported last year than any other year. So something big is about to happen, and that's why I've focused on uh, the uh, term Ashtaroth. And you asked me earlier, I'm going to answer that now. What does that name mean, and where did it come from? Well, the name Ashtaroth is mentioned in the Old Testament. So, folks, if you're in front of your computer now, uh, simply go to uh, just put it Bible comma. Demon Ashtaroth, okay, which is was his original name, A S H T A R O T H, Roth, Ashtaroth. Now it's been shortened by Satan's people online today, the New Agers and the, the Satan's light workers. He calls Ashtar calls his people who are on the ground here on Earth the possessed human beings that are preparing the way for his arrival. They've already given up their lives to this Ashtar guy. They don't really know, literally, he's, he's the Antichrist or he's a devil. They've been deceived. Nevertheless, they worship, practically worship him, and he's about to arrive. And so Ashtar calls those people 
his Federation Light Workers. His mm -hmm. Federation of Light Workers. You all you have to do is key that in to the internet. So let's go back now and let's research the word Ashtaroth. Now remember uh, the ner the name Roth. You know, so we have three pieces of the name Ashtaroth. R O T H means basically Rothschild. Rothschild. And the whole banking industry is Rothschild, you see, which is as a derivative of this advanced unholy trinity, the Antichrist, the son of the devil himself, Ashtar Roth. But the New Agers have actually shortened his name to Ashtar. They call him Commander Ashtar, and he's the leader of a UFO intergalactic fleet that is about any day now that is about to invade the world. And he, in other words, there have to be there has to be a need for him to invade. Satan has to create a need, so he creates a phony pandemic that uh, fools everybody into thinking that they're all going to die, and uh, maybe a few will. But hey, last year just from the flu alone, a few, a few thousand people died. So you create a virus in a biological warfare lab that you own as a Satanist that you're working to bring Ashtar down, set the stage for his arrival. You create crises, okay, that need to be fixed. So this pandemic is the beginning of the first major crises that has been calculated and created by the Illuminati, by the Rothschilds, by the 13 who take direction from Ashtar Roth or Ashtar in his UFO someplace in, uh, in hell someplace, okay? But mm -hmm. nevertheless, it, it, nevertheless, it's going to be a visible encounter. It's going to be a visible landing. Okay, it's going to be spiritual, but it's also going to be visible. He's actually going to come, and he's going to be, and you know, in, in a young thirty-year-old body like Jesus was. You see, it's going to be a counterfeit. He's actually going to say he's the second coming of Christ. That's what they say on their websites. He's going to claim he's the second coming of Christ. He's going to come in a UFO. He's going to he's going to look like Jesus, white. 30 years old, you know, roughly blonde. Nobody really knows what Jesus' hair color was, but uh, presumably brown or maybe light brown or whatever. But nevertheless, this demonic spirit called Ashtar or the uh, son of Satan, the great Duke of Hell, is going to mimic looking like Christ, even though he's going to be the son of the devil himself. Uh, and, and probably when he lands his UFO at the United Nations, the Pope will meet him there and give him the white horse of the apocalypse and the bow that the white horseman of the apocalypse carries, which breaks the first seal of the four horsemen of the apocalypse in Revelation chapter 6. Now, back to Matthew 25 for a moment, if you would. Mike, do we have a break coming up? Um, yeah, we don't have a break as of yet, but uh, let's go ahead and keep going here. Okay, where did the term left come from? Folks, you're getting an education. 30 years of education I'm sharing with you today, very briefly, in just a one-hour show. Uh, go to dukeofhell.com, www.dukeofhell.com. Watch my 13-minute video. What an education. You don't have to buy my 12 dollar book but i appreciate it it supports my international ministry i make three dollars profit three dollars and fifty cents profit per book but now matthew 25 tells us where the left came from i already described to you that Karl marx inaugurated or conceived of the demonically inspired marxist crap which turned into socialist crap which uh. turned into communist crap which turned into leftist liberal crap which is progressivism and everything else, and they've basically taken over the world, including America now, you see. They call themselves the left. So where did this term left come from? Well, I told you that Satan likes to mimic everything that Christ did, everything that God does. He mimics it all. He duplicates it, but in his own satanic way. So let's go to Matthew 25. Uh, Michael, do you have a moment to pull that up? Matthew 25, start at verse 32. Can you just go pull that up for a second? It takes two seconds on the internet. So Bible, is it Matthew 25, 32? Yeah, put in Bible, comma, Matthew chapter 25. Matthew comma, 5. Comma, verse 32. Okay, Matthew 25, 32. Here we go. And it says, according to King James, I have his, and before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate them one from another, as a sheep devises, she, shepherd devises sheep from the goats. Whoa, whoa. What did we say about goats? That's the third 
most important symbol of Satanism on the planet. Now, do you see where it came from? Mm hmm. OK, I, so are, so Satan and and his people are symbolized by the the animal, the goat. OK, so so when the judgment comes, this is what it's talking about. Matthew 25, 32, when the judgment comes after this life and every soul is resurrected to that judgment, God will take all of Satan's people on the left who are goats. OK, now read on. OK, let me. uh Look here, I think um, my computer is playing tricks on me here. So Matthew 25, 32. Okay, let me just um, move on down here. So let's go to Matthew 25, 33. So here we go. Let's um, try this here. Okay, Matthew 25, 33. And it says right here, this is going to um, all the nations will be gathered before him. He'll separate the people from one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He'll place the sheep on his right and goats on his left. Oh, king... stop, stop, stop. Uh, the goats on which side? The goats on his left. There you go. Have you ever had anybody explain to you where the term the left comes from until now? Have you ever had anybody explain that to you? There it is. That is, that is amazing. I have to say that. That's very amazing. Wow. <laughs> okay, so all of Satan's people are goats. On the left at the judgment, that's why they use that term to describe themselves. And they all happen to be communists because communism is Satanism in disguise. So now, the Antichrist is going to take this human form, this human body. He's going to in incarnate. I hate to use that term because it's not scriptural. But he's going to incarnate his spirit, his satanic spirit into a body uh, just like our God uh, took the body of Jesus Christ, our Savior, you see, uh, the Holy Trinity. So Satan's going to counterfeit that, and he's coming down as a man about the same age as Jesus when Jesus started his ministry at age 30, see? And he's going to claim to be the second coming of Christ, so he's got to look about the same. He's got to look about the same age, and he's going to say, I'm the second coming of Christ. On his websites, he says that. He says, That's I'm right. I'm the Christ, I'm the Jesus, I'm the Sanandra Jesus Christ, though. A, a different Christ, but I'm nevertheless, I'm that Christ you've been waiting for. He's going to return in the clouds in a UFO. That is amazing. And, of course, we'll talk more about that next time. And I'd like to um, go over some of your um, other books as well. I'd like to do a series with you. This is fantastic. It's been Please. Rich. I have to say this. Yes, we will. <laughs> and, of course, I did forget to ask you something. Who are your favorite um authors and writers growing up, and who influenced you today? I'm glad you asked that. Um, my favorite uh, Christian writer was, uh, uh, was and still is. He's still alive, but barely. His name is uh, Dr. Hal Lindsey, mm -hmm. and he wrote the book uh, 1970 that I read and remembered before I became a Christian. You see, so God's been working on me even before I accepted him as my Savior. You see, I still read Dr. Hal Lindsey's book, in 71 and 72 called the the late great planet earth which was a revolutionary book back then it sold 18 million copies and then i subsequently found his church to attend in 1993 in southern california so i later studied under hal lindsey an end times bible prophecy expert he's still alive in tulsa called hal lindsey ministry so if, if those of you care to tune him in just put in hal lindsey ministries Tulsa, Oklahoma. So I'd have to say he's my uh, best friend, my uh, my best pastor buddy, and and one who most incredibly influenced my life prophetically and taught me about the Lord's return. Okay, then of course you have everybody associated with uh, good quality fundamentalist Christian studies. You know Chuck Messler. Uh, yeah, okay, again, Hal Lindsey was his best buddy. Chuck Messler and Hal Lindsey were like brothers, but not brothers. And uh, then John MacArthur in Los Angeles, and on and on. I could spend an hour on that. But all the good fundamentalist teachers um, in the past 40 years have contributed to my correct understanding of where we are uh, in this book, The Duke of Hell. So, ladies and gentlemen, we're just about out of time. But, Michael, I, I want to, I'm a teacher. As you can tell, I'm a teacher. I'm full of knowledge. 
and uh, my body may be 73, but my mind is still 29. Uh, you know, my, my, my vehicle called my body, we're all in temporary vehicles. Your soul is riding around in your temporary vehicle. Your vehicle wears out, but your soul doesn't. It goes on after this life. Uh, if you're with Jesus Christ, you go to the sheep on the right. If you're with Antichrist, you go to the goat on the left. There are no transgender spirits. Satan has everybody confused. You know, if you're confused about which bathroom to use, get over it. You know, if you, <laughs> if, 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 if you have a man's equipment, then mm -hmm. use the men's bathroom, okay? Uh, you know, I checked out at Walmart today before the show, and there was a guy there who was so flippantly gay. I mean, he, he acted more feminine than most feminine, beautiful women act. You see, so that's a spirit of Antichrist. And he, I mean, he walked around with a limp wrist and, uh, you know, swayed and sashed and all that stuff. Listen, Jesus said it would be just like Sodom and Gomorrah. He destroyed them. That's an abomination. Okay. Jesus said everything that's happened heretofore, Noah's Ark, lawlessness, everything. It's all here. Read Matthew 24. We just read Matthew 25. What's going to happen to people at the judgment? But read Matthew 24 because Jesus said, these are all the saying, these are all the signs, I should have said. These are all the signs that will indicate what the final generation will be just before I return. Mm -hmm. Now, many people in the past have miscited that, have misquoted that, have misinterpreted that. But, Michael, all the signs that Jesus said, A to Z, in Matthew 24, are here now. We are the final generation. Therefore, it's unfolding and he said, all but the elect will be deceived. All people on earth except Christ's elect, his special people, all the saved people will be deceived and worship the Antichrist. Mm -hmm. and, and, and that's something we'll talk about next time as well, too. And uh, once again, author Terry Cook, the uh, author of Duke of Hell in its series as well, too, 17 books. And once again, tell us about your upcoming projects, what's your website, how do people contact you, and where can people purchase your books? And you've been fantastic. Love to have you on again. Thanks. Looking forward to it. And, folks, easiest way is go to www.dukeofhell, one word, dot com. Now, see, there you can watch my 13-minute video. It should start automatically. Some browsers don't allow that. But if you use Chrome, it starts automatically. It's 13 minutes long, many segments. But watch the whole 13 minutes. I mean, you know, it's a short period of time. It'll give you 30 years of insight into what is about to happen. Don't you want that? Now, it's a very spooky website. I have a graphic designer who has created me the most evil-looking, satanic snake creatures with big ears you'll ever see in your life. You know, I mean, it's really it's scary and spooky. Get over it. It's meant to scare you into heaven. And scare the hell out of you. <laughs> so go to so go to dukahell.com. Michael, it was indeed a pleasure. But one of the best interviews I've done in 30 years. Uh, so have me on again. I'm a teacher. I love it. And I want to get people saved. I'm really an evangelist at heart based on my relationship with Pastor Hal Lindsey, which I just mentioned to you. So uh, I want to I want to get people saved. I want to educate them. I don't want them to go to hell, even though most of them actually want to go, it appears. Mm -hmm. Right, exactly. And of course, we'll talk about that next time. Once again, Terry, a big thank you for your time. You've been fantastic. Looking forward to having you again soon. Do us, do us a favor. Keep us up to date. And uh, love to have back on again, talking more. Michael, anytime. Just just email me and you got me. I do a radio show with Omega Man. If people want to listen to another great program, go to Omega Man, one word, dot com and listen to me on Shannon. I do at least one show a month on Omega Man omegaman.com some great shows there mike let's do the same thing let's do a show every month at least and uh, help people understand what's going on and they'll hear things they never hear anywhere else we will do that thank you very much we'll talk soon god bless michael thank you thanks for listening to the mike wagner show powered by sonic web studios visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs the Mike Wagner Show can be heard on Spreaker, Spotify, iHeartRadio, iTunes, YouTube, Anchor FM, Radio Public, and themikewagnershow.com. Please support our program with your donations at themikewagnershow.com. Join us again next time for another great episode of The Mike Wagner Show.